Hello viewers, I'm SP and welcome back to Mask of the Rose, uh, which, I, where I can't remember what we're doing, it's been like over a week since I recorded the last one of these and I am at the end of a very long weekend, but I had a nice that my spirits are high, the storm of the century is occurring outside, uh, so sorry about the degree to which that is audible, uh, but let's, uh, let's, let's go ahead and do some stuff here, let's, let's ha live a couple of days down in the neath. Uh, first of all, by recalling the past, as we often do. So, another memory from our jumbled grab bag of that night. It was a big night. A lot of stuff happened. Um, yeah. Let's, let's learn some more about what Archie was up to. I'm surprised at you trying to read in this light, Archie. He held up the volume he was perusing. I thought I remembered there was a bit about the Welsh tornado here, and I wasn't wrong. It makes an elevating change from your usual reading about Medici poisoners, I suppose. She had caught him a day or so before, reading a history of toxins over the supper table. This had been the subject of quite a few jests since. What is wrong, pray, with trying for a wee bit of knowledge as a druggist? Sola dosis facet venenum, ven venenum, venenum, probably, as the books say. Nothing's a poison unless you get the wrong amount. Uh, yeah, the, what, what is it? The, the English version of that phrase is something about poison being in the dosage. Or, I, I don't remember the exact wording. Okay, <laughs> experimented with drugs. That's kind of funny because out of context, that phrase does not mean the thing that it's being used here to mean at all, right? But hooray for, hooray for the, the sort of like beautiful ambiguity of the English language. We have so many ways of talking around a thing. Um, let's, let's head outside. So what are we to do today? Uh, let's actually take a look at our journal before I do anything else. Uh, so, help Grizz ask Rachel Landau for writing work. That is a thing to do. Maybe that's the thing to do today. It's a, it's, a, it's a thing to do to take care of someone who lives in the house, which I feel like is something that we committed this character to very strongly. So, yeah, we can craft further explanations for London's situation and bring them to Archie. I'm a little worried that having a bunch of bullshit printed in the papers is going to lead back to us and that Mr. Pages might not be too happy about that. And I don't know what happens if you make one of the masters angry, but it can't be good, right? Uh, also, there are apparently still more census forms to grab. We haven't met everyone. Let's do this. Let's, let's help Grizz out. So we probably want to go to the boarding house and get Grizz. Oh, I guess we haven't done the census ourselves. Uh, but there's no option here that looks like that thing. Do I need to select the Landau's place for that? Yes, okay. Let's prioritize this. We take care of Grizz before we take care of anything else. <sighs> we should wear something. We should change, for sure. I mean, obviously we're wearing something. This is a this is a social call, so we want to project social call, right? Um, does my my tailor's apron? I don't know. The Landos are are, if not rich now, then at least used to the rich life, and I think the tailor's apron lets us play on that obsequiousness that we have decided is is key to our character, but maybe. This does not commit me to any particular social grouping, and the effort of having dressed up, perhaps, speaks better. I want to seem like I'm trying. I think, like, putting on the, um, putting on the apron gives us the chance to sort of ingratiate ourselves through that obsequiousness. This gives us our chance to ingratiate ourselves in a different way that I think is a little bit less, um... 
the problem with the the problem with the other one is that it puts us at a disadvantage power wise immediately. Like the way the specific way we are ingratiating ourselves to these people is by putting ourselves below them. This lets me try to approach on a bit more even footing, which might make sense in case they're mean to Grizz or something. Yeah, we'll try it like this. I think I, I think this is the best we're going to do right now. I certainly don't want to wear the Admiral's hat. Miss Landau, may I introduce my friend, Miss Griselda? Grizz. She heard about your writing and asked for an introduction. Oh, do you read my work, Grizz? I don't remember what I was, what kind of uh, intonation I was giving Rachel at all. I never read novels. I have more pressing demands on my time. Then I don't understand why you've come. Yeah, that's not a great start there, Grizz. You want to maybe play along a little bit? Um... <clears throat> No, Grizz is not going to cover this. I need to step in. Grizz has an avid reader in need of supply. We thought they might particularly appreciate your gifts. How kind of you. My employer would like to pay you to produce stories more quickly. My hands only go so fast. We, would, we could provide a secretary, supplies... I'm, I'm not sure what a person in your situation might need. I can see that. How do you spend your time, then? Yeah, Grizz is, like, Grizz is being remarkably cold to Rachel. We've not really seen Grizz interact with anybody outside of the house before. I guess maybe this is just how she is? Attending social events until something inspires a return to my desk. Some muses inspire... Mine exasperates. But those activities produce... What? A list of incidents, alphabetical, to be included in the coming chapters? <laughs> Characters. Today, a woman creeping backwards into government. No, I have my eyes front, trust me. She's tried to discard her society accent... But she wears gold links in her cuffs. I didn't come to be a literary model. If you want me to write more, it's the best thing you could have done. London's circulating libraries and magazines hold tales by the thousand. Your masters commandeer whatever they wish. I don't understand your difficulty. Okay, I know we showed up to help Grizz, but I kind of want to agree with Rachel's point just because I want... If if Grizz knows anything more about precisely what it is the Pages is after, I want to give her reason to say it out loud. We could learn something, I'm sure. You're not the only one to ask such questions. Their intentions are hard to read. <sighs> We've brought books by the wheelbarrow, new and old. Our reader, and there is one particular reader, has rejected everything Pages has brought to him. Oh, interesting. Okay, so it's not Pages himself. Or Pages itself, I guess. We will pay for every chapter on the love of neath-dwelling Londoners. My compatriot Winnie will help you. Uh, yeah, absolutely accept the assignment. Spend more time with Rachel? You got it. <laughs> if you can tell me what you require. I need a plot about how my heroine recovers from her betrothal to someone left behind on the surface. Just the skeleton of how it happens. I can do the rest. If you could contrive a way for her to end the business, that would be very welcome. All of my thoughts have proven insipid. Okay. I can help you plot your next story. I can do that. In fact, the only thing I can do is construct the skeleton of a plot, so we are well matched here. We only want the tails. <laughs> and the Neath's heart, heart's blood. 
I accept, if that only means taking an extra payment for work I already do. I promise nothing. Well, you've allowed us to provide a certain incentive. After Rachel sees us out, we have a thoughtful walk home. Grizz is silent with her thoughts for a good part of it. If she had any turn for politics, what a politician she would make. Though, of course, they'd never swear her in. But imagine her speeches. Um... Ah, we can push a little... We can push a little matchmaker thing here. Uh, no, I'm gonna admit what's going on. <laughs> you know, I like her myself. Meaning you admire her profile abstractly? No. Thinking of having her carved as a cameo, perhaps. Not exactly. An intrigue. Well, I mean... Gosh. <laughs> choosing... The way they've framed this. Choosing ignorance intentionally feels kind of shitty. Right? Like... I, all right, let's just, let's assess the situation. Uh, if I may ask, do you have feelings for Rachel? There's nothing to tell, I believe. Okay, cool. So we're not, you know, there's no, no conflict there. Unless she was blowing me off because she already recognizes that, yeah, could be, I suppose. All right, construct a plot for Rachel to get her heroine out of a ruined engagement. We have some pieces now. We can probably figure this out. So, predicament is bereaved. Uh, you... I mean, the story's got to be about, about love, right? I guess I don't know if it just escaping the engagement would be about love enough for Mr. Pages or for whoever the, the quote-unquote reader is, but... Just in case, let's make it extra about love. So, in order to escape the engagement, in order to, at the very least, feel like she was on the other side of it and could search for love some more, she... Um, confessed feelings... Spoiled Beauty had lost her betrothed in the fall of London. He was believed to be traveling in France. The Spoiled Beauty had begun to fear she would never see him again. An unknown saw the opportunity to pursue their long-standing long love of the Spoiled Beauty. Oh, okay. So this, yeah, right. The, the who here is some other character, not the Spoiled Beauty of the story. Uh, hope for love. So then confessed feelings like do I feel like that's enough we're talking about a woman who feels she has an obligation that's difficult to just to just back out of you confess your feelings to her is that going to be enough for her to go oh well if you're interested in me then fuck all this probably not right it's got to be something let's say composed poetry let's make it like a, a thing where she is moved by the beauty of the art an unknown composed a poem entitled To the Girl with Impossible Hair. Can I change this? I, okay, so I can base this character on somebody that we know. Interesting. Um, and then they regret nothing or they struggle with regret? And is our, our spoiled beauty here is being portrayed by Grizz? Is that what... This is a little confusing to me, the way they've set this up. Um, yes, okay. So Grizz has taken the position of the spoiled beauty, which is a strange way to construct this, I think. Why would we be treating Grizz as though as though the story is about her? I guess that's not really like that as a question that's not super valuable because the fact is we are doing it. But it doesn't make a ton of sense to me. 
So if we um, if we select somebody here, are we are we like borrowing their background? A constable saw the opportunity. Yeah. Okay. So we're we're borrowing sort of like just the rough facts of this person. Um, just any random Londoner. Hmm. What kind of person? I guess it doesn't matter much. I could try to think. Like, I don't read a lot of romance novels, so I guess I don't know. Ooh, what if it's like a class struggle thing? Right? Because, like, uh, not Ivy, but, um, like, Phoebe, maybe. Yeah, this could be this could be something, right? So the spoiled beauty had was worried about having lost some status, and then she's approached by somebody who loves her, who is even lower in status than she does. And there you have the kernel of a of a like a meaningful conflict, and the the love has to overcome the desire to be upwardly mobile. <laughs> uh, the spoiled beauty. So you composed poetry, and then the spoiled beauty let's do a really like sappy one and see if see how that goes with the uh the reader spoiled beauty received the poem in the intended spirit keeping it by her beds uh, bedside and rereading it frequently and so you regret nothing and you um you yeah the spoiled beauty is happy in love the housekeeper regrets nothing like this is the skeleton of that story. A pretty a pretty happy version of it and then like, you know, whatever, like uh, Rachel can make it work, probably. I feel like it's a pretty difficult problem to overcome. People are very hung up on status, but let's go visit Rachel and, and tell her, "Hey, I got something for you." I cannot do that today. I can only see whether David needs anything. Um I wonder how often I need to go back and basically, like, do stuff on Horatia's behalf to feel, for her to feel like I'm keeping up my end. Hold on. Can I also, um... We can make up some more stories like this, right? Uh, do I want to though? Because again, like I am worried about, I am worried about printing too much stuff and getting either Jacob or getting either myself or Archie or both of us into some kind of trouble. It feels it feels so exposed, you know. There are still more census things to do. But I can't seem to do those in the evening. This is a time basically just for for working on relationships. Or having Harjit show me somewhere new. Perhaps there are some other people that we could... Um, I probably shouldn't wear this. This doesn't feel like the right outfit. Uh, yeah, no, that one's not changing... I'm going to not wear the badge to talk to him because I know how he feels about that. But I am going to go sort of workman-like. I'm, I'm here on the job, but I'm not going to hang the badge in front of his face because, you know, he's a little sensitive about it. Good afternoon, Winnie. Uh... You know... We're, we're buddies with Harjit. Sure. Would you like company on your rounds? Um, if you wish to come along on my rounds, we could check both sides of the street at once. Should be faster to clear the area. So we check on all the empty houses in the neighborhood, making sure that nothing untoward has moved into them. We do find one house that has obviously been vacated very recently. Harjit gathers the, us the usable things. A couple of coats, a half-drunk bottle of spirits. He does not say where he thinks the owners have gone. 
Finally, we work our way back around to our own familiar courtyard. Horatia's house is well anchored. Whatever else moves, Chapman stays put. And I found my way to somewhere you might like. It's an easier route than it ought to be. I think perhaps there's an error in the alignment of the streets. What a curious thing to say. Why does he think I might like it? Oh! The clock pleases me. A finger pointing at nothing. Sometimes you can hear the river creatures singing here. But mostly I like to enjoy the ruin. We stand and talk for a time. Now and then someone walks by, but mostly we have quiet. The false stars crawl across the ceiling of the Neath. Okay, that's interesting. The South Bank. A scenic path along the stolen river favored by lovers and pickpockets featuring the ruin of Big Ben. Um, yeah, we'll continue talking to him. You find any interesting places today? Oh, uh, there's a menace eradicator's shop around the corner in that direction. He points toward a couple of buildings. I can't see the path between them at first. It takes a minute of staring before I notice the alley that cuts between. Well, now, isn't that curious? This path is more than usually complicated. Several times we stop and retrace our steps. We cannot omit this part of the procedure. Going backwards is part of the route. Ferret's shop. Ferret is the local menace eradicator, and there's significant need for their services lately. Okay, like an exterminator. Menace eradicator is a very strange... Because the word menace... Boy, I don't know. If I had rats or moles or something, I don't know that I would describe them as a menace. Usually uh, it refers to bigger problems when used by an American, I guess. Maybe, maybe this is a, more of a British usage. The sign outside says this shop belongs to one ferret. This, presumably, is them. Here for a spot of eradication. Suffering from undesired company in your place of lodging, by any chance. Um, Ferret works in a grim business. He probably has kind of a dark sense of humor, right? I'm Winnie. Ferret. Thought you could see that on the shop window. I am human. Once I walked under the open sky. If you can't say the same, at least break the horrible truth to me gently, will you? Ah, oh, pleasure to meet you. She fully does not respond. Okay, well. Uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to come in real soft about this census stuff. I'm sorry for the interruption, but I've been sent to ask a few questions of the citizens of London. Or those who survived, at any rate. I'm not sure where what the masters have in mind. Nonetheless, it would be a help. Hmm, I see. Uh, respond with protective kindness. You know, that's interesting. One, like, one working person to another. Listen, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure they're not trying to screw you here. Like, yeah, let's, let's go that way. There's nothing for you to worry about. Please tell me you don't have a surname. Ferret Wilson or Ferret Clark would be a terrible disappointment. Oh, Ferret's the only name I go by. And no one saw fit to tell me if it was a forename or a surname. It might have come down to me from a noble house, for all I know. Courtesy of me great-grandsire and his wife, Lord and Lady Stoatweasel. Uh, that form. Do you have to put on it whether a person is a gentleman or not? Um... Okay. So I wasn't a hundred percent sure if this was a if this was a gender thing or if this was a class thing, but uh, you know it doesn't ask anything about whether the person is male or female. Ah, oh, that's good. Can't say I've ever liked answering that one. Uh, yeah. Well, people are always trying to fit one into uncomfortable boxes. Uh, you don't fit in either, eh? In different ways. Different ways. 
Um, ask about Ferret's household arrangements. Do I want to keep on this, like, I'm protecting you thing? He seems to be responding it to it pretty well. He's not finding it, like, patronizing. These questions were written by pedantic sorts at the Ministry. Don't worry too much about your answers. What sort of household is it? Have you got anyone sharing it with you? Friends, siblings, partners in crime, pets, etc.? No one but me here, unless you calculated in the terrier. And the dove. There's one lives under the roof. No rats, though. You won't find a single living rat in this building, unless I invited it here with an engraved invitation. Well, all right. I think that that's, you know... I'm a little... I'm a little put off by his terrible taste. But fine. We'll just play it off. It's being fastidious to uh, side at work. All right, let's, um... I don't know that there's any power here to seed. I feel like this has been a very soft interaction so far. I'm going to come at this simply. Are you married or otherwise connected? Oh, you won't find any parish documents regarding my nuptials. Nor my christening, neither. I wasn't expecting you until this evening. I I'm seeing the customers, as you can see. Hello, my friend. I already know this customer. I'm just by with a warning about the pub at the corner. More unusually infested, is it? If the publican hires you to clear the place, bring help and fire. Huh. I will simply drop this topic. Oh, I see. That'll be spiders. So... I mean, I do kind of want to inquire about the, na the nature of their relationship. Is this going to come across as insulting, I wonder? This is kind of a weird way to approach it, too. Let's try, let's try something pretty direct. You pay Harjit off, do you? Oh, not like you're thinking. He won't have it. But now and then, there's someone that comes to me that needs an escort. South of the river, in particular. Not a journey to make by your lonesome. That word gets to me, and Harjit escorts him. Back to business, though, eh? What else can I do for you? Okay, I'm glad I asked, because that's an interesting relationship. Uh, we are not flirting with the ferret... I mean, I guess I'm curious what you might be selling here. Interesting. Okay, you have some clothing available. A disguise so I can trail people. What a what a goofy wig. Um, you know? I doubt we will be able to afford any of this. Something shady and disreputable. It'll make me look at home among criminals. Uh, oh, okay. Well, we can totally afford it. You know, it feels to me like Ferret is probably a valuable person to know. I'm going to go ahead and overpay for this prison jacket. I'll give you two pennies for that. <laughs> well, now, I'd have taken one, but they say generosity always does come back to you. I'm not sure it's true, friend, but I owe you one now. They haul out the prison jacket. It ain't a particular fa flattering garment, and mind the stains. But it's got long sleeves, so it's warmer than nothing, eh? This jacket says I've spent time in prison. That's not how I acquired it, but it fits among the criminal fraternity and encourages a confrontational attitude. Uh, do come back, especially if you have anything of a verminous nature that wants looking into. Or if you meet with any likely urchins that want what wants to apprentice. I went looking for the Ragged School, but they ain't to be found where they used to be. The Ragged School, huh. Well, nearly time for supper. Let's go ahead and do what we usually do for supper. Alright, we got some new stuff. Don't know when I would use it, but I just figured we don't have anything that quite fits that role, so... May as well. Plus, an opportunity to give Ferret money probably works out for uh, for the best for us. 
Horatia arrives late to supper. Well, what's on your boots, Horatia? Uh, it looks like milk, and it smells like a sewer. Don't go into the basement. Huh. I know about the tentacled thing. Oh, it's not only that. The tentacle won't harm you, but there's a bit of a mess. The floor down there is flooded. I moved everything to higher shelves. Uh, of course offer my help. Well, is there anything I can help with? Only if you want to help carry buckets of nasty water out of the basement. So we form a bucket line. Horatia insists on taking the basement position. She still wants no one else to enter. But I stand on the stairs and take buckets from her and carry them out to the gutter. They do not smell like ordinary water. My eyes burn. That was weird. She appeared and then disappeared again. Uh, yeah, and then to sleep. Things do seem to be getting worse here uh, remarkably quickly. I do need to figure out how to deal with that tentacle situation. Another morning, another newspaper. This morning slides open on the table. Ferret's menace eradication seeks reliable employees unafraid of rats. If I am not too occupied otherwise, oh yeah. It's remarkable that, um, that Ferret's able to pull like a front page headline. I guess they must be slightly more important than I would have thought. Or at least more dug into the city proper. Alright, let's recall something else. How about... This storm. The memory of lightning flashes, and the memory of rain covers my face. And I am back above in a summer downpour. All the horses and their riders huddled under the rail bridge. All the saplings bent to kiss the soil. Not just any summer, but a June evening when I was fifteen. And though I have not thought of it since, and though I will never see the like again, that storm, for a moment, is truth itself. And our present cavern is embarrassed to be seen through, an illusion. What a weird little poetical remembrance. I guess anyway, head outside. Uh, can I bring Rachel? Yes. I would like to do this. We're going to keep we're going to keep trying to impress here as best I can. Without going, like, too fancy. Because obviously, if we tried to dress as though we were proper fancy folk, um, Rachel's going to see through that immediately. Good morning. I'll see whether my master and mistress are at home. I am going to flirt gently with Rachel. I'm going to try a little bit. I know she doesn't love us so far, but that, that could change, maybe. Why is it that whenever I see you, I feel you're noticing things I would rather hide? It should worry me. Yet, somehow it doesn't. If you continue like this, you might find some of your bon mots in, the, in, my, next no in my next novel. What are your origins? What sort of people do you come from? I can guess a few things from your clothes and your voice, but there are contradictions. Yeah, um... So, do we tell a version of the real story that sort of places us... It places us as lower class, but it is, like... I guess what I'm, what I'm really, like... When I look at this, what I'm really thinking of is doing this. Inventing a story of my elevation. I don't necessarily want to tell her... The story that's just like, yeah, I see, yeah, the structures of society see me as beneath you without it being clear that I don't, at least at this point, you know, down here in the neath where things are different. 
Um, but maybe that isn't what this would do. You know, she's got to appreciate a good story. Well, I used to dine with Lord Palmerston before the fall. He consulted me on matters of state, confidentially. It seems I have passed some test. Interesting. That's not the way I read that change in expression. I lay out the plot as I've arranged it, especially the neat conclusion. See if she wants something with maybe a little bit more turmoil or heartbreak in it. Oh, this ends very cheerfully. Yes. I need to write more chapters. They will require some source of difficulty. We begin in one predicament and we end in another. You left out the second predicament. You've brought the story to a standing stop. Oh, I thought I was doing more of like a full story outline. That's a fair point. Um, yeah, no, that's, you got it. That's, I understand. I'll, I'll find another ending for you. I don't want to argue with her or like flatter her into printing something that's going to be less effective and thus like damage her reputation. Thank you. I know the requirements of the author may seem odd to the layperson. But if I sit down to write and I don't have suitable incidents in mind, nothing will go right. The characters will talk themselves in circles. Yeah, no, I, I get it. Um, Let's see if we can expand our network a little bit here while we're here in this social visit. Rachel falls into telling me stories of Milton's salon. It is attended mostly by writers and poets. Especially daring poets will sometimes uh, attempt a reading, but Milton's side commentary has proven a deterrent to the softer bellied. He has no patience with work that's made to pattern. If it's a story about the uncomplaining suffering of wives, servants, children's or, children, or dogs. There is also a strict rule against pains to the faithfulness of Penelope or Ruth or the Virgin Mary. If anyone dares say anything like that, he quips it out of existence. She goes on like this for some time, introducing me in turn to all the characters of that world, whether highborn or not. Do make free use of our address, by the way. I would be glad of the company. Okay, interesting. Um, I want a romantic. Romantic. I would like that. The chance to spend time together is always welcome. Do not leave it too long. I have exhausted all the entertainment to be had in the foibles of our own household. Okay, yeah. You may rely on me. And I have something for you. I, I don't know whether you'll care for it, but if you don't, it probably has some slight value. It was a gift, but for various reasons I don't quite dare wear it myself. I believe it's of devil make. She fishes in her bag and pulls out a gleaming piece of brass jewelry, strangely made. A spearifer's fork. A sort of fork. It shows my allegiance to my yellow-eyed friends. Interesting. Um... I think that this would be a very aggressive kiss. Like, this is way early in the relationship, right? We had a little bit of flirting go, I think, pretty well today, but I don't think we're there yet. Okay, we've just decided for ourselves that we are in love. Uh, judging by the clock, I can't afford another errand today. Uh, and I don't know what that errand would be, but I do know that we need to change this plot. So... The Spoiled Beauty... How do we handle this? I, I think that, I think that we, have to, we have to fix this step, right? So right now it's it's like she accepts the poetry in the spirit in which it is offered, but maybe maybe the gesture is not it's not obvious enough. The housekeeper uh, composed a poem entitled "To the Girl with Impossible Hair." The spoiled beauty mislaid the poem before she had a chance to read it, 
it fell into the hands of a young postman and corrupted his dreams for seven nights afterward, but had no effect whatsoever upon the spoiled beauty. So then, the spoiled beauty, ah, uh, gosh, does what? So this overture fails, and then the spoiled beauty gets herself into another complication that we have to deal with here. So, has nightmares, is troubled by mo most peculiar nightmares. If the poem is also producing corrupted dreams, this maybe sets it into more of like a fantasy mold, although not any more fantastical than the things that are happening in real life at this point. But maybe the, um, the housekeeper then has to use their poetry skills to deal with the night... I don't know. It feels, it's a pretty neathy story. I'll say that at least. All right. Let's head out and do something. Am I allowed to? I'm not allowed to bring the story to her now. Well, then. We go back to Ferrets. I kind of want to ask Harjit about just more places to go. You know what? Let's see if there's anything else we can do about this basement situation. It does seem to be getting pretty bad. I mean, Horatio won't mind me in this, but even so, it feels a little bit um, highfalutin, is all. Alright, let's see if there's anything else that can be done here. Uh, Horatio in the basement taking inventory of our supplies, which she really shouldn't be... Uh, mentioned increased hiring in the field of vermin elimination. Is this useful? I guess it might be. It might tie in to the problems that we need eliminating in our own basement. I recount the newspaper story. Ferret's menace eradication is hiring rat eradicators. Oh? Eager eradicators of other beasts are also welcome. I present the whole business in a hilariously sinister light. All this talk of monsters makes me very grateful for Harjit. Hmm. I'm actually kind of curious where this goes. I've become careful of people I don't know well. I've become careful of people I don't know well, I will say. Horatia nods along and even finishes a few of my sentences for me. Okay, so yeah, we're, we're close, but no, this is not a conversation of any terrible import. These are the subjects people discuss in the Neath in order to avoid talking about teeth and snakes and the occupants of our dreams. Not to mention the spiders. I meant to ask whether there's anything I can help you with? Uh, Mrs. Besom has been talking up a storm about a new thing called Hallowmas, which she says is a dreadful abomination. A rite with masks conducted in darkness. I was prepared to be scandalized. But from her account, I've rather taken an interest. One person wears a mask and hears a confession from another person. And it seems to me we're all in need of a chance to talk now and again. And this year has not been kind. Sh yeah, okay. Why not? I'm not particularly opposed. Alright, celebrate Halimus with one of the folk of Chapman. Interesting. An interesting opportunity. Silence falls. Well. I went to the caves below the sinkhole, looking for the men with tentacles. <sighs> Thank you. I'd have gone myself if I could. Full of undulating wigglies ready to undermine London cellars. Horrible tentacles oozing forth to pull us from our beds. Uh, no, it wasn't anything connected to our basement. Oh? Well, of course tell her the truth. Why would I not tell her the truth? I met a rubbery man. I explained about Barkajin and Batachikan. I suppose it stands to reason we're not the first down here. Can't be just devils and masters and what have you, but ordinary sorts too. Well... As ordinary as a man that looks like something found dredged up on a hauler ship can be. Seems a sorry fate to lose your home twice over. 
I hope something can be done for them. I'd best go tidy the parlor. Yeah. Um, my opinion is unchanged. My feelings are stronger than I. The whole, the whole, we're being, we're being close family here. This is, this is the relationship I want. It isn't long until dinner is served. We can go straight to the table. We're wearing the right clothes. Grizz bought home some extra supplies today. I was able to do something that almost resembled cooking. Uh, well, I do want to compliment both of them. Like, we're very, we're very in good with Horatia so far. Maybe it's not necessary to compliment her further. That's a little bit of like a video gamey way of playing this interaction, but you know. Well, it's a good thing we have Grizz's help. You are very welcome. All of London would be in a difficult position if it weren't for her employers. Which might be how they prefer it. Yeah. Alright, when the meal is over, I give Horatia a hand clearing up, as I always do. Just feels like... It feels like an important part of our commitment, right? And then straight to sleep. Yeah, it's a little bit of a shame that the game's not more reactive. Like, the fact that after... I guess after the bucket train thing, in theory, we've drained the basement. So it wouldn't be that weird to see her down in the basement counting supplies. But I don't know. I wish that the um, the text for that event had at least included something about the thing that we had dealt with in the basement. Or I don't know. It doesn't feel like the text we saw is aware of the thing that had happened right before. And I think that's one of the main weaknesses of these kinds of games. Another morning, another newspaper. The headlines today read, Masters will exchange warm winter clothing for disused street signs. Huh. I suppose that's interesting. Getting people to um, sort of willingly come in and aid in the erasure of the pieces of town that the Masters would like to see erased. You know, just get them used to the complicity is all. Um, all right, I think that's going to be it for us for today. Thank you all so much for watching. When you come back next time, uh, we will be continuing to pursue helping Rachel with her work and hopefully also other, other some, some other stuff, you know, of a, sort of a smoochy nature. Uh, and then, honestly, I don't know what else. I have a feeling that there is going to... We're in this sort of like lull period where we're establishing what normal feels like. I have a feeling there's going to be plot. Something big is going to happen that we're going to have to deal with. And for the moment, mostly we're just waiting for it, it feels like. Somewhat unsettling in its own way. So come back next time for, hopefully, things to get into full swing. And we'll see you then.